الله أكبر الله أكبر Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Islamic Center at New York University podcast coming to you straight from the heart of New York City. We're building an amazing Muslim community here at ICNYU where everyone is welcomed and respected no matter where you're from or where you're at. This is the place to be. So open your ears and your heart and come along with us on another life-changing journey. Bismillah. In alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسول صلاة ربي السلام عليه الله سبحانه وتعالى says O oh you who believe Fear Allah as He deserves to be feared and do not die except in a state of Islam. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha al-nasu attaqu rabbakum al-lazhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa'a wa attaqu Allah al-lazhi tasa'aluna bihi wa al-arham inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba O you who believe, fear Allah or O mankind Fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and produced from that soul its mate and made from their combination many men and women. So fear your Lord whom you ask each other by and by the ties of kinship. Verily, Allah is ever watchful over you. And Allah says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa qoolu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa yut'i allaha rasoolahu faqad faza kozan azeema. Allah says, O you who believe. Fear Allah and say that which is correct. He will correct for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then they are indeed victorious. All praise is due to Allah, who is magnificent in His essence, perfect in His attributes, undeniable in His presence. All praise is due to Allah, who has the most magnificent names. A praise that is forever for Him, a praise that eternally remains. May He send peace and blessings in their most perfect fashion. May He send greetings and salutations that are complete and everlasting upon the best of His creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May He perfect His rank and elevate His station for He taught us what we did not know. And He gave and He gave and He gave because He loved us so. All my life, I feel like I have been explaining to people who I worship. When I was kindergarten and first grade, I would have to explain to kids why I couldn't trade my tuna sandwich for their ham or their salami sandwich and I would say, Allah doesn't allow it. And then when I got to middle school and people started dating, I would have to explain that I was not not dating due to lack of options, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> does not allow it. Allah does not allow it. And then when you get to university and the world opens up, I still avoided many things, whether it was alcohol or whether it was other things, because Allah did not allow it. And then when you graduate from university, it continues. And the question, whether it was in kindergarten or whether it was university or whether it was beyond, was very similar. Why does Allah care whether you avoid this or you avoid that. And a lot of times when we present Islam, we present it as a list of do's and don'ts. But it is absolutely crucial <coughs> that we take the time to remember who it is that we're worshipping. The scholars say if you know who the commander is, the commands become easy. And so in this brief khutbah inshallah I simply want to remind us of who Allah is Allah introduces himself in the Quran in a verse that we've heard countless times in our lives Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam all praise is due to Allah the Rabb of the worlds what does Rabb mean? Ibn Manzur the famous the author of the famous Arabic lexicon, Lisan al-Arab, the language of the Arabs. He says, Arab 
in the language is al malik and al sayyid and al mudabbir and al murabbi and al qayyim and al mun'im. The mudabbir is the one who plants. Al malik is the king. Al sayyid is the master, the one who is obeyed. The murabbi is the one who develops you and nourishes you. And al mun'im is the disposer of blessings. And Allah introduces himself as Rabbul Alameen, the Rabb of the worlds. He is the one who has been developing us our entire lives. He is the one who's looking after us our entire lives. He is the one who has intimate knowledge of all of our affairs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has been watching us and watching over us our entire lives. Allah is not only our Rabb, my Rabb, my Rabb, but he is the Rabb of the worlds, the animal kingdoms and kingdoms and creation that we don't even know whether it exists or not, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is its Lord. And so we are introduced to a powerful God. And then he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the merciful God. And I just want you to reflect on if Surah Al-Fatiha, this chapter of the Quran, the opening chapter of the Quran, it begins with, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the merciful. <coughs> and then, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And then the next verse after is, the merciful, the merciful again. Anybody who ever feels distant from Allah's mercy is someone who just didn't know Allah's mercy in the first place. And unfortunately, many of us, or people that we know, feel distant from God's mercy, not because Allah isn't merciful, but because they never took the time to learn about Allah from Allah Himself. They learned about Allah from their Islamic school teachers. They learned about Allah from their parents. They learned about Allah from people who wielded heaven and hell over their heads as threats or as rewards. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He describes Himself, He says, Bashir bi ibadi bi anni ana al rahim Allah says, give Good news, or he says, Nabbi ibadi, rather. Inform my servants that I am the forgiving and the merciful. rahim. I don't have the time to go into the, the, the subtleties of this verse. But then even in the next verse, when he says, and that my punishment is a severe punishment, the scholars say that Allah, when it came to mercy, he called himself by those attributes. I am the forgiving and the merciful. But when he says punish, he doesn't call himself the punisher. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَضْلًا كَبِيرًا Allah says, give glad tidings to the believers that they enjoin from Allah incredible grace. If we had billions of dollars to brand Islam, I know when people say Islam, there are certain words that come to mind. But if we had the ability to properly brand Islam the way that Allah brands Islam and the way that the Prophet ﷺ brands Islam, I believe that Islam would be synonymous with mercy. Our brothers, if you please just come up and keep making space, keep making space. This room is going to be full, inshallah ta'ala. Sisters, if you could continue to move to the, to the back and create as much space as you can. Moving backwards to the right, Jazakumullah khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to the Prophet وسلم, that we did not send you except to the mercy of the worlds, to be a mercy to the worlds. And so the Prophet وسلم's entire mission was a mission of mercy. In any case, the second thing that we believe about Allah is that He is He is the absolutely merciful. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names himself Al Razzaq. He is the provider. He says there is no dabba that walks on this earth, there is no creature on this earth. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for it. If you met a mother or a father and you ask them how many children they have and they tell you six or seven or eight or nine or ten, you know what people's reaction normally is? They go, whoa, that's a lot of mouths to feed. It's a lot of mouths to feed. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself, that there's no creature on this earth except that he's the one who provides for it. His ability to provide is perfect. And the verses where Allah talks about his provision are unbelievable and beautiful. I'll give you one example. The name Ar-Razaq only appears one place in the Quran. 
in Surah al dhariyat And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, the famous passage where he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِعْبُدُونَ I did not create mankind and the jinn except to worship me. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقِ I do not want any risk from them. وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ I did not create you because I need your life force or I need your energy or I need your support or I need your service or I need your worship. I did not create you for, I, I have no need for you. But, he says, I didn't, I, I don't need you to feed me. And then he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقِ Allah is the provider. It's the opposite way around. You don't provide for me. Allah is the provider. And then he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينِ Okay. He mentions three attributes in this verse. And they're powerful attributes. Because one of the greatest things that people worry about, human beings, is we worry about our provision. I worry about my finances. I worry about getting a good job. I worry about the economy. I worry about my business. I worry, I worry, I worry. We worry about finances a lot. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقِ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ The possessor of strength and mateen. The one whose strength is unwavering. Anytime you and I look for a provider, we look for a provider that has two qualities. Number one, what's the strength of their provision? How strong are the, is their ability to provide? That's why your cell phone providers, they will advertise the strength of their network. Is it LTE? Is it 5G? Is it... And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, ذُو quwa. His ability to provide is the greatest in its strength. But then, even if a provider has the ability to provide a lot, nobody likes provision that's shaky. And that's why Verizon's commercials are, can you hear me now? Good. Can you hear me now? Good. Can you hear me now? Good. Why? Because no matter how great my internet download speeds are, or no matter how strong my network is, if the second I leave the city and I go up north, or I go south, or I go east, or I go west, I'm not able to connect, I don't want that type of a provision. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces His ability to provide by saying, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقِ And His ability to provide is perfect, and His ability to provide never ever breaks. He will provide for you tomorrow like He provided for you today. On your worst day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. On your best day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. He is unwavering. And so, a person then, if they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their provider, they should never worry about where their risk is going to come from. It's always going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why you have that famous hadith in At-Tirmidhi where the Prophet sallallahu says, if you truly relied upon Allah like He deserves to be relied upon, He would provide for you like He provides for the birds. Every day they go out into this world hungry and they come back full. So we believe that Allah is the ultimate provider. We believe that Allah's attributes are perfect, always. And so even when it comes to Allah's knowledge, Allah is perfect in His knowledge. His knowledge is, his knowledge is complete. It is not mixed with any error in judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what He decrees is perfect in its wisdom. The Prophet sallallahu even before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about his knowledge, describing his knowledge. He says, يَعْلَمُ مَا كَانْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ Allah says to Allah belong the keys of the unseen. لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّهُ There is no one who knows them except for him. There's no one who has the keys to the unseen except for him. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَعْرِ And Allah knows what is in the land and he knows that what's in the sea. And there is not a leaf that falls. <laughs> or a grain that shifts in the darkest remote places on this earth and there is nothing that is ripe and there is nothing that is dry except that it's all recorded with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is describing perfect knowledge and the scholars they say about Allah's knowledge that Allah knows everything that has happened He knows the past and he knows everything that will happen. He knows the future. And everything that didn't happen, if it happened, how it would happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَعْلَمُ مَا كَانَ وَمَا يَكُنُ وَمَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَوْ كَانَ كَيْفَ يَكُنْ Everything that could have possibly happened, all of the possible, possible universes, possible existences, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how all of our lives would have played out if every choice that was taken for us to be here in this moment was altered, 
Allah knows how our existence would have been. If you didn't come to the university that you came to, if your parents never met, if you if you never moved to New York, like everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And so that should inspire a trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Ala ya'lamu man khalaq, wa huwa latif al khabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, does, does not he know when he's the one who created? And he is the know he is the knower of all subtleties, and he is the most well informed. It should inspire trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trust in Allah's law, trust in Allah's decree, trust in Allah's judgment, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's destiny. That the one who's written my destiny up until this point, with all of the pain that it might have been, that, that might have been involved in me being in this moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who wrote it, and he is more <coughs> merciful to me than I am to myself. And he is more knowledgeable about what is good for me than I am. And so if I were to write the script for my own life, I would not be able to write anything that is better than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in his mercy, we believe in his provision. One of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the name Al-Ghafoor, the forgiven. We believe in a God that no matter how far a person has ventured, and I want you brothers to come further, come closer, if you're not touching somebody, that means you're not doing right right now. You need to be, you need to be foot to foot, shoulder to shoulder, head on shoulder, all of that good stuff. Make your shoulders soft for each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena qila lakum tafassahu fil majalisi fafsahu yafsahillahu lakum. Allah says that when it is said to you, O oh, you who believe, to make space in gatherings, then make space. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things expansive for you. Jazakumullah khair. So, we are a people who believe in a Lord who is so forgiving, though no matter what a person has done, if they turn to Allah sincerely with commitment and say, Oh Allah, forgive me, they are forgiven. Allah forgives. There is a beautiful hadith that Anas ibn Malik reports, reported by at Tirmidhi, that Rasulullah sallallahu said, that Allah said, Ya ibadi, O oh my servants. Or it says, O oh son of Adam, innaka ma da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana minka wa la O oh my servants. As long as you call upon me and have hope in me, I will forgive you no matter what you have done and I will not mind. O oh, son of Adam, If your sins were to reach the sky and then you saw forgiveness from me, I would forgive you. O oh, son of Adam, if you were to meet me on the day of judgment with the earth's weight in sin, and then you met me, not committing shirk with me, not associating partners with me, not worshipping other than me, I would meet you with what is equal to it of forgiveness. The privilege that we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the forgiven. And so if a person ever feels distant from Allah, then they need to ask themselves who moved. Because the Prophet sallallahu says that Allah extends his hand during the day to accept the repentance of those who sin at night. And Allah extends his hand during the night to accept the repentance of those who sin during the day. That whenever a person turns to Allah, they find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiving and merciful. I'm amazed at this passage in Surah Al-Qasas where Moses kills a man. And when he kills the man, Moses says, Rabbi inni zulamtu nafsi. Oh my Lord, I oppressed myself. This is a mistake, I oppressed myself. And then he simply says, so forgive me. And then Allah says, right away, He says, Allah says, The fa in Arabic indicates immediacy. So it means Allah immediately forgave him. Kill the man. It's like 20 years, 30 years, that's life. Moses turns around and he says, Oh Allah, forgive me. And Allah says, I forgave him. Because Allah is the forgiving and merciful. But Moses, I mean, he's not playing games here. The next verse is really beautiful. Musa alayhi salam, he says, yes. Moses says, Rabbi, my Lord, 
by, by the blessing that you have cast it upon me, that you've given me, فَلَنْ أَكُونَ ظَهِيرًا لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ I will not be a supporter of the oppressors. I won't be a supporter to the oppressors. The ظَالِمِينَ rather. I won't be a, a supporter to the oppressors. Meaning, I recognize that you've given me a talent. I've recognized that you've given me strength. I've recognized that you've given me a blessing, this blessing of, of my physical strength. I am now, out of gratitude to this blessing, I am not going to abuse the talent or the strength or the ability that you gave me. That's his repentance. He's recognizing this is something that you've given me and I have to rein it in. And so if Allah gave me wealth, I'm not going to abuse this wealth that, that you gave me. If Allah gave me beauty, I'm not going to abuse this beauty that you gave me. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me intelligence or eloquence, I'm not going to abuse this talent or skill that you gave me. Whatever you bestowed upon me, I am not going to make it a tool for the oppressors. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. So these are five quick traits, but, but we believe in so many more than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى To Allah belong the most beautiful names. أَقُولُ مَا سِمِعْتُ مُسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِوَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سيما كثيرا The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says أنا سيد ولد آدم يوم القيامة ولا فخر He says I am the master the leader of the children of Adam on the day of judgment And he said and I'm not saying this out of pride He says Adam ومن دونه تحت لواء يوم القيامة He says Adam and everybody after him are going to be under my banner on the Day of Judgment. What is the banner the Prophet ﷺ is going to be carrying? He said, my banner is the banner of Alhamd. It's the banner of praise. So then scholars ask that question. Well, why is the Prophet ﷺ going to be carrying the banner of praise in particular on the Day of Judgment? Why the banner of praise? And they said, because Rasulullah ﷺ was the one who praised Allah the most. He's the one who praised God the most. And his ummah, his nation, are the people who praise God the most. I give you a quick example. On the best day of your life, what do you say? Say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to God. Now, on the worst moment of your life, what do you say? Say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to God. You know, it's really profound. You know, you, you see people who are, you see the footage, you see people go through all sorts of natural disasters in the Muslim world, earthquakes, floods. You see people being bombed in Palestine and, and when they get interviewed you see them saying Alhamdulillah 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 and the translation is like thank God my house was flooded it's like it, it doesn't communicate what we feel but what we believe is that that person is saying I praise God so then the question becomes why are you praising God at a moment where somebody else why is the Muslim praising God at a moment where somebody else might be shaking their fist and saying, this is proof that God doesn't exist. Why God, why? Why did this happen to me? Why did you take away my loved one? Why did I get sick? Why, did this, why, why didn't I get this job? Why didn't I get this promotion? Why, why, why? So why is the believer saying, Alhamdulillah, all praise be to God, even in their most painful moments, because of what they know about Allah. They know that He is forgiving. They know that He is wise. They know that He is merciful. They know that this that is coming to them is coming from someone with these attributes. And so they know that it's not bad for them because Allah would not write what is bad for you. It's a popular question people ask and they say, why do bad things happen to good people? And the answer to that is bad things don't happen to good people. They never do. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, He says, Amazing is the affair of the believer. Everything that happens to the believer is good. There's no exceptions. Everything that happens to the believer is good. And he says, How so? Because if they experience something that is pleasurable, desirable, they respond with gratitude and that is better for them. And if they experience something that is undesirable, painful, they respond with patience. And that is better for them. And so in both circumstances, whatever they're experiencing is going to be good for them. 
But that's only for the believer. That's the person who experiences that contentment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person continues to learn about Allah. And, and, and this is what I want you to take away from this khutbah. That you should spend time. If you haven't spent time, and even if you have, spend time learning about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. There is no subject that is greater than this subject. There is no object of study that is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, the last verse of Surah At-Talaq, He says, <coughs> Allah says, Allah is the one who created seven heavens, and He created earths like it. <coughs> he made the command descend from them, from the heavens to the earth. And so then the question becomes, why? Is it? He says, the question becomes, why? And then he says, That you may come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. And that Allah has encompassed everything in his knowledge. I.e., he created the heavens and the earth so that you and I can come to know him. That you come to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Once, when I was in university, I took a... I was going to school out of state. I take a bus and I'm sitting next to a, a kid just met him for the first time, and we're both taking the trip to New York. And he was telling me that he was adopted. And his parents, his adopted parents, he was adopted as a baby, his adopted parents did not leave him wanting for anything. They did not leave him want, needing anything. They loved him as perfectly as parents love any child. He said, but when I became older, I needed to meet my biological mom. He said, I just, there were questions about myself that I couldn't answer until I knew her. I needed to know, do I have her face? Do I have her temperament? Do I have her sarcasm? Do I have her smile? Do I have her hands? Do I have her, I need to know who my mom is. And he said he went on a journey until he was able to meet her. And I think we would all appreciate that journey and we would appreciate that if that person spent decades of his life trying to meet his mom, that would be a worthy journey. And if he traveled the entire world to meet his mom, that would be a worthy journey. But a greater, a greater journey, and actually more crucial and more important, is not that a person seek to know who the, themselves by getting to know their parents, but that a person seeks to know themselves by getting to know the one who created them. You can't know yourself unless you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah mentions the opposite. He says, Nasullah and Sahum Anfusahum. Allah says they forgot Allah and Allah made them forget themselves. That is the greater loss that a person goes through life not knowing who created them, not knowing why they're here, not knowing what the rules of the game are. Why are you here in the dunya? Why do things happen the way that they do? It's like playing a video game when you don't know the rules and all you're doing is dying. It's incredibly frustrating. And that's how people feel not knowing why they're here, not knowing why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would do the things that, they, that He does. And so, learning about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and, and, and the beauty is, eventually a person will feel so, so much privilege that when everybody is worshipping what they're worshipping, some people are worshipping fame, some people are worshipping money, some people are worshipping youth, some people are worshipping themselves, their desires, that I am worshipping a Lord of such perfect attributes. And when everybody is following whatever way of life they're following, I'm following Islam. I'm so grounded, I'm so anchored. And when everyone is taking whoever it is that they're taking as a role model, that the role model that I'm taking is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You get to a point where you feel just so honored and so privileged about this. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that that person has tasted the sweetness of faith. Now you've tasted the sweetness of faith. Who? The one who's pleased with Allah as their Lord and is pleased with Islam as their religion and is pleased with Muhammad وسلم, as their Prophet. You feel that privilege, you feel that pleasure, and then you start to taste the sweetness of faith. We ask Allah to allow us to hear the speech and follow the best of it. We ask Allah to grant us the sweetness of knowing Him and the Amen. sweetness of worshiping Him Amen. and make the best of our days, our last days and the best of our moments the day that we meet Allah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka jannah wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawli wa amal 
ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وصلنا اللهم على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا برحمتك أرحم الراحمين رب يرحمهما كما رب يعني صغيرا رب يرحمهما كما رب يعني صغيرا اللهم رحماك بأهلنا المستضعفين المنكوبين في كل مكان اللهم رحماك بأهلنا في المغرب وفي ليبيا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم كلهم ناصرين يوم قلنا الناصر اللهم اشف مرضاهم وداوي جرحاهم يا رب العالمين ودل على المفقود منهم يا أرحم الراحمين ويا أجود الأجودين اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين المنكوبين في كل مكان وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمني حمكم الله We hope you enjoyed our podcast. If you're inspired by the work that we're doing at the IC and want to help keep it going, subscribe to our podcasts, follow us on social media, donate to help support us at icnyu.org, and most importantly, keep us in your continued du'as. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.